Um, you're now saying that Twitter is one of the primary ways you stay informed. Tell me about how communications have changed, how you've gotten the word out. What are you doing differently now than you did five years ago? I think when we started, we looked at the media as being a kind of an interesting participant in what Davos was. And now we look at it as being an engine for creating a sort of global platform for talking about serious stuff. And what we've done is we've enabled some, of, some parts of that media to get deeper into those stories. And we've also created our own platforms for distributing what we think is serious conversation. So, for example, we had a report come out on inequality just before Davos, which kind of raised the whole issue right up the, uh, the agenda globally. And we followed that through in Davos, both with our blogs in Spanish, in English, in Chinese, with, with social media. You know, we're on WeChat, we're on Weibo, we're on a, we're on a Spanish version of Twitter, and we're in, in Japan as well. So just using all those tools that weren't available at scale five years ago just gives you this kind of owned media platform, which is you know, a phenomenal shift in the landscape of communications in the past five years. Is it fair then to say that you're not simply relying on the, the media, and I want to ask you about them in a second, the media who's there covering Davos, you're actually communicating yourself, you're, you're doing your own reporting. Yeah, very much so. I mean, I think that's the, the key takeaway from what's going on in, in communications right now is, you know, the old method would have been to PR it, and that's no disrespect to people involved in public relations, so there's a, certainly a role for that. But, you know, if you've got the ability to create a platform which is also your own role in a conversation, then that's a much more direct, interesting way to play a part in shaping those global conversations. So just to give you an example, you know, I knew what the Pope was going to say, luckily, a little before he, uh, his, he said it, or he said it through Cardinal Turks. And you know, we had all sorts of shareables, quotes, different ways of distributing that message prepared, ready to go. The moment the Cardinal delivered the words, bang. They go out to two million Twitter followers uh, in English. They go out to several uh, thousands of Twitter followers in Spanish. They go out in Japanese. They go out in Chinese. So it gets phenomenal kind of release. I mean, that one picture of the Pope saying that, you know, humanity, wealth should serve humanity uh, and not rule it. 1,350 retweets by the first day. I mean, just phenomenal. All right, how many journalists uh, cover Davos who are there? Uh, in the room, about 450, 460, but then you've also got camera people, you've got satellite coordination staff, you've got a whole hundred, hundred people in the back room. So and, and how many people on your team working with those journalists? My team's, during Davos, is about 80, 90 people. Is that enough? Uh, it feels <laughs> like it, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, we don't trip over each other, but it's, you know, it's all about touch points and having uh, the ability to talk to people when we need to talk to them. And having that number of people just gives you a phenomenal ability to reach out and connect with people when something important is happening, when someone needs to know something. You know, so we run a lot of behind the scenes briefings with world leaders, that kind of stuff. And the ability to kind of have someone just say, you need to be here, makes a big difference. All right, and all right, obviously you're coordinating with the journalists themselves. I mean, they're gonna tell you what their needs are, what they're most interested in. You've got some of them moderating panels as well. Uh, are you also talking, is your team talking with the presenters at the panels to know what they're going to say and what their expectations or hopes and dreams are in terms of media? Well, we have, um, each of our sessions has, if you like, producers. We don't call them producers because we're Swiss, but um, they all have producers. So they have their own kind of, their, their own little show. But we run, for example, 23 TV debates. So, you know, you know what's going to go through those television debates. You know the sort of pickup. You know who the people are. You know, we know who's going to be potentially making news out of all of those different events. We have all of them plugged into social media, make them available via lists, custom lists, sessions that have their own hashtags. We have our own live tweeting capacity, multilingual in a lot of sessions. So, you know, we're trying to squeeze as much as we can out of this amazing content experience. I mean, that's really what we're sitting on. We're sitting on a ton of fascinating, serious content. And being able to squeeze it, repackage it, reprocess it, push it out through all these different streams that's the challenge.